That way we as a body of Christ can pray with one another even as you are not here. There is a lot of things going on here in our congregation in this coming week and in the week past. But I first want to draw your attention to some flowers that we have up front. They are here today from the funeral service from Margaret McCaw, which was held earlier this week. So I continue to please ask you to keep Carol and, and family in your prayers. Also, as the body of Christ, we hold people um, and support them in all kinds of ways. Please also keep in your prayers the families of Juanita Hansen and Mark Gierke, whose services were also this past week. And then also, um, Dee Black's son, Keith, passed away just a few days ago. His service will be on Monday evening at 7 at George Boom Funeral Home. Visitation will be before that at 6. And then we also got word yesterday that Evelyn Weidenbach has passed. Her services are pending, so please keep Roger and the Weidenbach family in your prayers as well. We truly are a support for one another as the body of Christ. And even as we grieve and support one another, we also celebrate. And so I would like to invite you to pray for Sarah Bruick and Dwayne Christensen, who were married here at Eastside yesterday. And so they are getting ready to start their new life together as husband and wife. So please say a prayer for them also. And as we continue on these wonderful milestones in the church, you will notice that there is also a baptismal banner hanging up front. At the next service, we will be celebrating the baptism of Colin Kleinschmidt. And so he is the son of Matt and Jeslin. And so it is a wonderful day for them and their family. And we look forward to celebrating that sacrament at our next service. As we go forward today, we have the joy of having Pastor Don Solberg with us. He is up front. He will be bringing us the gospel message and preaching. And in fashion of keeping it truly a family affair, right next to him we have his son John, who will be providing us with special music. We're just having a little sound issue. My mic is on. I'll speak louder. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to figure this out in just a moment. Um, but as we do that, also I would like you to know that there will be debit cards available in the narthex following services if you would like to pick those up. And then as you are sitting here today, um, take a look around at our windows. I think they are a little brighter than they have been in the past. And I am happy to announce that the window project that we began two weeks ago is now complete. There is new protective coverings on all of our stained glass. It looks so much better, not only internally, but at night when the lights are on. It just projects these wonderful colors out into our neighborhood. So, so happy to have that done. We are looking at a um, dedication coming up for that very soon. The dates are to be determined still at this point. We continue with Life in the Congregation. Tuesday night, we will have our online class. Wednesday, we have handbells and confirmation. And coming up on Thursday of this week, October 1st, Eastside is sponsoring Food to You. And so we obviously host that ministry here on the first Thursday of every month, but in October, we are also sponsoring it. So we definitely need some volunteers. There is a clipboard hanging in the narthex underneath the bulletin board. I invite you to please put your name down there and come and be a part of that ministry. There are, are so many people in need, especially um, this year, and the more hands that we can have to get food in their hands, the better. So please prayerfully consider being here on Thursday. And then also continue to think about supporting your church financially. I know there is a link for those worshiping with us online, as well as on our brand new church website. If you have not tuned into our presence online um, in the last couple of weeks, please do so, and you will see an updated um, website for our congregation. It is a, a wonderful improvement and we're so thankful for all of the people who've had a hand in making that happen. But at this time, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to invite Jason Klein, who is our congregation treasurer, to come forward and on behalf of our church council to give us just a little update where we are so far this year. So welcome, Jason. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 
Um, like everybody else on the planet, uh, we were dealt some circumstances earlier this year, and, and now after six months of, of going through these different kinds of circumstances, it's a good time to talk about the position of the church. Um, if you might, you might recall, we were look, working on a possible capital campaign, which we haven't followed through with at this point, to retire our, our mortgage debt and so on. And uh, cash is typically very tight, you know, in the church budget. Um, you know, we, we were also uh, um, down a pastor during this time. We weren't paying two pastors with the church budget. And so, um, you know, the net result after six months is that we're in pretty good cash position, really. Um, the revenues are down from, from offerings, um, and the expenses are down from, from not having a second pastor, and actually some other things, too, since we weren't open for a while. Um, so just looking at it from, you know, the things that go on in the church, um, the cash that we've received has been sufficient um, to do things under the circumstances. Uh, back in March, we also took kind of a precautionary approach uh, to cash uh, by asking Thrivent, who holds our mortgage, uh, to suspend payments. And for the last six months, our, our monthly payment has been suspended, and that was about a $90,000 benefit to cash over that time. So unfortunately, the debt remains, but at least we weren't having to come up with the money to pay that debt. And so, you know, the net result um, over the last six months is that our cash has steadily gotten stronger in the church. Um, only one pastor, no mortgage payments, though. So that with the uh, reduced offerings that are happening during this period, um, that wouldn't be able to be sustained after things come, you know, go back to normal. Um, one other thing, um, in case you didn't know, we, the church did choose to participate in the PPP program, which was the government program for small businesses and things. We qualify as a small business uh, for, the, for that. And uh, the church did receive $42,000 to supplement um, expenses that were allowable. And we have spent those according to the program, so we expect that that will be all fully forgiven to the church. Um, uh, one other thing, um, the endowment is, uh, is a major asset of the church for its, for its operations um, and its ministry during the year. Um, each year there's a distribution made that goes towards the various efforts that we have. Um, initially, of course, like the markets, that endowment went down dramatically. Um, however, it's fully recovered and back at record levels as of the end of August. It's fluctuated again here this month, but uh, it does that every month. So all in all, all things considered, uh, God's provision has been for this church, and it's, it's met our needs, and we're in a relatively good position going forward for the time. Um, with that, I'll leave you back to the pastor. Unless there's any questions you want me to take, or okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that update and, and the information. Thank you very much. We continue with our worship, and to put our minds in a spirit of hearing our readings, I invite you to turn to your celebrate insert as we have the introduction to our readings. Jesus' parable about two sons who don't know what they say reveals surprises in the reign of God. In the reading from Ezekiel, the people claim the ways of the Lord are unfair, while God offers repentance and new life. Paul urges us to look to Christ as a model of humanity, putting the interests of others above our own. Nourished by the broken bread and shared cup, we offer our lives for the sake of our needy world. Please rise for our call to worship. <clears throat> we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We gather seeking the authority of Christ in our lives, who calls us to put Him before all other concerns. We gather seeking truth in our day-to-day -day actions, and Christ calls us to care for our neighbors. We gather seeking joy and freedom, and filled with the Spirit, Christ pours us out in service to the world. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. 
we take a moment for reflection. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace. <clears throat> we pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs. <clears throat> Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out to him in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn, Awake My Soul and with the Sun, number 557. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. church for the unity of all for this holy house for all who worship and praise let us pray to the lord let us pray to the lord Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way Kyrie eleison every day out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor that we may live out truth and justice and grace let us pray to the lord let us 
for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God, power and riches and wisdom and strength, and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. Alleluia. We join our voices in the prayer of the day. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seating as we hear God's living word. The first reading for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet, you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed to do and what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. We read responsibly Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame, 
Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. The second reading for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition of con or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that, is what's, that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. shelter of the Lord, who abide in the shadow for life. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my God in whom I trust, and he will raise you up.
God's given a command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon the hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Our gospel reading for this day, the 17th Sunday in the season of Pentecost, is a reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew. And just a couple of words before I read the gospel, if you notice, and I would encourage you to do so, that this is one of the times when all three of the gospel readings, the Old Testament, Ezekiel, and Philippians, and Matthew, really fit together. And so, Take it home and read it because what you need to, what you hear in the gospel reading is answered in the epistle and the Old Testament reading. So, when Jesus entered the temple, oh, by the way, this is shortly before Holy Week. This is what's going on in Jerusalem right now. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. So, Jesus is in the temple. But when he entered the temple, the, pre the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority uh, are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? And Jesus said to them, well, I'm going to ask you a question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven? or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another before they answered, and they said, well, you know, <laughs> it's kind of got us. If we say from heaven, he will say, why did you not believe him? And if we say from human origin, we are afraid the crowd, because they all regard John as a prophet. And so they answered, well, we don't really know. And he said to them, well, neither will I tell you <laughs> by what authority I'm doing these things. And then he went on to say, tell me, what do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and he said, son, will you go and work in the vineyard today? And uh, his son answered him, I won't go. Okay. But then later he changed his mind and he went. He went to the second son and he said the same and he answered, well, yeah, I'll, I'll be glad to go and work for you. But then he didn't go. Which of the two did the will of the Father? 
And they said, well, the first one. And Jesus said, but I'm going to tell you something. The tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came into you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes, they believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, your words do not fall sweet upon our ears. They're jarring words which dislodge us from an all too comfortable complacency and easy piety. Forgive us, even when we see, but do not believe. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. You may be seated. Well, how do you feel about those gospel lessons? Are you all excited about it? All nice and tingly? Like what you heard? I didn't think so. They carry a heavy cargo of judgment, both of the accounts. Strong utterances of critique and tough words of criticism, never popular, never well received, and certainly particularly in our day and time of worldwide chaos when we believe that we are so right. So in charge. Not much of two stories, really, debates, yet they're important. They are some of the several that are spoken by the master storyteller in that raging and very bitter debate between the teller and the proper folk, particularly in the closing days of Holy Week or preceding Holy Week. A furious dialogue over the issue of giving the appearance of being righteous and putting flesh on the vowels and consonants that trip so easily off our tongue. The second one, kind of a brief story, lean and, uh, in, and, and in fact, the recounting of two strong-willed, obstreperous, mouthy, disrespectful teenagers who give their father no small amount of consternation. Nonetheless, it's a story that you and I can hook into and get, uh, and get a handle on because it's a story of judgment. Huh? A couple of paragraphs of indictment leveled against all those folks who give the appearance of rightness, who mouth the correct language, whose respectability wears well, and whose decorum is so proper. It's been said rightly so. We learn best from what we know well. So I'm going to share with you another story <clears throat> that kind of fits into this. It was a young man, <clears throat> heard the call, that unbelievable call that comes from deep within the stirrings of one's spirit. And he said no in many times, in many ways. There was the no of ignoring or pretending that he didn't hear thought to himself, well, if I ignore it long enough, it'll go away. It's only the imagination of one looking <laughs> for a reason to, of trying to find himself and be himself. But the ignoring no soon becomes the no of rationalization and logic of talking himself out of the call for all the usual reasons, the main one being, ah, God must be joking, certainly doesn't want me. You know, folks with my track record of life and living, huh? Are hardly the stock from which preachers come from, sprinkled in his struggle with the no of busyness, of a frenzied activity of throwing himself into what he thought he was best suited for. And finally, in desperation, comes the no of compromise. Well, well, maybe I could do it, uh, you know, this way, but not that way. Uh, I, well, I'll meet the caller halfway. Uh, well, I suppose most of the way, but not all the way. The call didn't go away because it hardly ever does. It's a call of persistent tenacity, where it's always the prerogative of the caller <laughs> to call where, when, and who he chooses. 
in the chaotic and tumultuous world of a young man's struggle over who he was and what he was, was given the gift of grace. Ha ha. That gracious gift to dare to change his mind, to repent, to believe. And so perhaps it may seem a bit, you may, you may see even a bit of your own self in the text that we have read, because the call, you see, is always unique to the individual to whom it is given. It's always the all-encompassing call to the many, however. Well, we'll take back what was said a little bit earlier. This is no small story. These are no, no insignificant tales. They're great stories because like all the stories that the storyteller tells, we suddenly, and surprisingly perhaps, find ourselves as the subject matter. Ooh, that binds. We're the one on center stage. Okay. And so, who are we? Huh? Are we one of those who says no and then later changes our mind? Or the one who says, yes, I'll do it, but with no intention of following through? You see, the question, and this is the question you're going to have to deal with, and I'm going to send you out of here today with it, the simple question, who is really in charge of your life? And friends, you better have an answer to that. See, the words of judgment don't go away, and Jesus knows that, and thus it is that the words of grace come. In a strange and very unlikely way, perhaps, but it's always a word of grace. If the tax collectors and the woman who prowl around at night, uh, you know, uh, folks of every age and time who by choice or chance are far outside the community of faith, who live on the fringes, if they hear the word, if they listen to the call and are chained, then surely there is hope for every one of us. Would you agree? Do I get an amen? Amen. Okay. Why? Because for every word of judgment, there is also a word of grace. And grace, my friends, always begins with repentance. Every yes has to be spoken in the context of repentance because it is, it is in repentance that one finds the will and the power to change. And it's a change not of just exchanging a set of fitly spoken words for another, not just putting aside some treasured attitudes and beliefs so that I can be in charge. No, no. <laughs> Repentance is that marvelous gift of God's grace that changes everything about us, our mind, our heart, our reasoning, our logic. And so it is that Jesus says of those whose life appearance and style seems least desirable, they heard they believe. And to them is given the promise of the kingdom. See, who really is in charge? Well, faith, my friends, is what undergirds the response, and faith is what empowers the response. Faith, you see, is what energizes both the doing and the going, because faith is always better and should be understood as a verb it's not a noun. It's a process, not a possession. Faith, sometimes ongoing, off-again experience, rather than a one-time, well, I finally got it all put together, so I'm all set to go. No. It is faith that prompts the response to judgment, which is believing, and it is in the believing where grace is grounded. With profound consistency, the writers of the scriptures, you see, speak of believing into, as opposed to believing in. And there is a difference. See, believing in God is really nothing more than a conscious act of the mind. 
was not much more effect upon life and living than believing that the moon is the reflection of the sun. But believing God, hear me, believing God, is far more radical, for it is less a position than a journey, less a realization than a relationship, less a change of attitude than a change of life and living. Believing stirs the blood, quickens the spirit, refreshes the soul, because it affects who I am and what I do with who I am. One believes in God for one reason and chooses to do so. But hear me, we believe God when in some miraculous and marvelous way the power within, that call, cuts through all the rationalizations that we come up with, all the logical conclusions we dream up, and we are confronted by God in a way that by and large leaves us no choice but to believe. When Jesus says that whoever believes into him shall never die, he does not mean that even a willingness to go and do in and by itself guarantees passage into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, Jesus insists, as he did in today's readings, is the experience of believing itself. It is the knowing who really is in charge. Have a good week. Amen. Please rise. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. 
living together in trust and in hope we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Gathered together as the people of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of renewal, we give you thanks for your word that calls us to repentance and puts us again on a path of following you. May our eyes be open to the actions we should take in this world that we might reflect your love and grace. Lord, in your mercy. God of renewal, we pray these things also for our nation. Be with our leaders at all levels. Speak to and through them and give them your word that they might look out for those who cannot look out for themselves and that we might act in ways of justice and truth. Lord, in your mercy. God of renewal, you ask that we... We ask that you be with this congregation of East Side Lutheran Church, that we might follow you by doing the will of the Father. We ask that we might go forward in faith even when circumstances are difficult, and that you would renew us as a people. Bless our call committee in the work that they are doing, that we might continue to bring a faithful leader into our associate pastor position. And may we trust that you are at work in our midst. Lord, in your mercy. God of renewal, we give you thanks for the gifts you have given us, and we ask that you would help us to be good stewards of our time and our possessions and of our finances, both as individuals and families as well as a congregation. And calm our anxieties, provide for our needs, and open doors. Lord, in your mercy. God of renewal, we thank you for the ways in which you come to us in our own lives and in our own homes and remind us of our call to be your followers. Be with Colin Kleinschmidt and his parents, Matt and Jeslin, as Colin gets ready to be baptized later this morning. May you be at the center of their home and our homes every day. Lord, in your mercy. God of renewal, we pray that you would also be with relationships and with couples of all ages, and especially with those about to be married. We lift up to you Nathan Brower and Sidney Shaw, and for those who have been recently married, especially Sarah Brunick and Duane Christensen. Lord, in your mercy. God of renewal, we thank you for those who have gone before us in faith and who now rest in you. May their memory point us to a closer walk on your path. And we ask that you would be with all those who grieve, especially the families of Margaret McCosh, Glenita Hansen, Marv Bierke, Keith Black, and Evelyn Weidenbach. Lord, in your mercy. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, hear the prayers we offer from the silence of our hearts. All these things we offer to you through your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We share a sign of God's peace with one another. Peace. And we continue our worship with our offerings.
Please rise. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold the gifts of God for the people of God. All is ready and all are welcome. Please be seated.
your eyes. May this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in His grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare. The body and blood of Christ, lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and fill your hearts with peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank we will. Thanks be to God. And we go out singing or sending him shout to the Lord. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My Stop.